Michael, Igor Ozaganov, um, reading about him in a Lance Hornby piece in the Toronto Sun. Um, he, he sounds like a kid in a candy store from the quotes that Lance was able to uh, uh, rustle up and put into his item. Um, it's like a dream come true, he says, just being around all of these NHLers and having an opportunity to potentially make the Leafs and contribute to a team that is considered by many a uh, Stanley Cup contender. Wow, big news for him, big opportunity. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Osaganov has sort of been on the radar for over a year. It's very similar to the the Zaitsev, of, um, you know, uh, wooing and uh, recruiting uh, by the Leafs a few years ago. Osaganov actually was a teammate of uh, Zaitsev in with CSK Moscow, and um, Zaitsev helped in the process. Um, and you know, he, there's a lot of things to be excited about, but you have to sort of temper expectations. This is not a guy who many people believe is going to be a top four guy. He's, he's big six two, two hundred and ten 210 pounds. He's a right-hand shot. Um, he is, it, it does not, you know, he lays out some checks. He doesn't get pushed around. Um, but you know, the, the book on him from people that I have talked to who are followers of the KHL said, you know, he's. You know, he's a good, good skater for his size, but sometimes makes some bad decisions. So, you know, the hockey IQ question is something we'll have to see in training camp. But, I mean, the, the, the one thing that, you know, that may have tempered the expectations is that he had a bad last year in the uh, in, in the KHL. And if you look at some players who made their make their uh, intentions known that they're leaving, sometimes they don't play them in best positions. Sometimes they lower their minutes. Sometimes, you know, it, that – there is that, you know, like if you're going to stay in the KHL, we'll give you all the rewards. And if you're not, if you're not staying in the KHL, then go to hell. And that's, I think, part of it because he only scored nine points in 42 games last year when he scored 22 the year before. And he's got a big shot. But I mean, right now, I think he's in the mix for that bottom pairing. But I don't think we should get too excited about you know, what he's going to be. It's sort of like Borgman and Rosen. Let's just wait and see how he plays in North America. And the one benefit here is he's 25 years old. He's not a kid. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's a fully mature man and they could use somebody on the right side. If he, if he can stay up with the speed and, and, uh, and be in a sort of an impact player in a lesser role, Uh, the, the, the Leafs could definitely use that. So he's no Dmitry Yuskevich or Daniel Markov right now. Well, I, uh, I, <laughs> I the funny thing is, I, names I, out. I like both of those guys. Dimitri oh, I Yuskevich, love those guys. Are you kidding? Dmitry Yaskevich was a really good defenseman, and he played. Oh, yeah. You know, and Danny Markov had, a, I think, a little bit of a screw loose, and that's always entertaining. <laughs> You know, I, I I think everybody will remember fondly of him giving the Yarmer Yager salute back to Yager. I think it was after Gary Volk's overtime goal in 99. He gave him the salute as they're celebrating in the corner at the igloo. He turns around and gives the salute to, to Yager, and I just love that. That's being totally oblivious to just everything that's going on, and that was something special. I also remember a Danny Markoff interview when he was going by Daniel, and it might have been Dmitry Yuskevich translating for him and the whole time Yuskevich basically took over the interview and spoke on behalf of uh, Markov with <laughs> whomever it was and the whole time Markov was staring directly into the camera so Yuskevich <laughs> is looking off or looking at the interviewer and Mark Markov is looking straight in the camera like just lost lost in the camera just gone and it was just it was beautiful because he came up with reckless abandon and he had uh, the Yaskeviches of the world helping him out. And it was just a, a real, real fun time. And I, I think Danny Markoff lives in Toronto now, or, or he lives in the United States or something. And he's really, he's just kind of um, integrated in, into the, uh, into the North American way of life and, and stuff like that. So that's really cool. He runs a hockey school or something like that. But the other point I wanted to make is um, if you stick us gone off in a pairing situation with Jake Gardner and let him blow a tire and blame it on Jake Gardner because that's what we do, right? We blame everything on Jake Gardner. Well, I'm not, not everything, but I'm just saying it's like, you know, for, for those who it's, it's the unknown quantity. It's that, that guy that we don't know anything about. We haven't seen him in the, in the OHL. We haven't seen him in the AHL. It's somebody who's coming over and we've just seen highlights. We've seen him in the, like the KHL shooting contest, mm. having the hardest shot. I mean, okay, that's great. Yeah. But let's, you know, as we've seen with, you know, other players who come over from Europe, some of them 
thrive. Some of them struggle. And that's, you know, that's what we're going to discover over the next four or five weeks before the beginning of the regular season. We're going to see whether he can stay up with the, the speed uh, of the NHL and whether he can be physical like he has been in the KHL. And if he, if he can, then maybe he can be a help. You, mm-hmm. you have your group that is clearly um, flawed, but also not, not the worst group of players that you can find. And they, they do have an opportunity to really ride the wave of a, of a, of a, of a juggernaut offense and, and well, be great and be great. So a guy like Igor Zaganov or whomever you're going to put in there, these guys, they just, they need to come in there and, and, and play a quiet game, play a smart game and just help support the process. You don't, you're not really expecting any of these wild cards to come in and it's rare, but to have a defenseman just come out of nowhere and, and take over the league. Right. So you're not expecting that. You're just you're expecting professionalism and you're expecting somebody to be responsible. And that's all these guys have to do. The advantage for the Leafs defense going into training camp and going into the regular season, barring any additions, is continuity. Like you just said, all six of those defensemen are defensemen who played with the with the club last year. And, you know, if it was a gone off or somebody else like, say, Rosen steps up into into that sixth defenseman role, then that'll be a little bit of a change. But pretty much if you have five of six defensemen as the same ones, you know, there is going to be a, a level of familiarity with with their defense partner. The problem is, is that um, <clears throat> the other consideration is the quality of that defense. I think we've discussed that ad nauseum. Now, the one thing I think is an advantage for the Leafs is even after the signing of William Nylander to whatever contract he, you know, it's a bridge or a long-term deal. The Leafs are going to have a, a, a ton of cap space and they may, as they did last year in the first half of the year, just play, you know, maybe rotate some defensemen, see who is, you know, who can fit well with them. And if they realize or recognize that their defense needs to be upgraded closer to the deadline, they have the cap space and they have the young assets to be able to go out and make that kind of deal. So it's probably going to be a look and see process. Um, you know, I, I don't still don't rule out the possibility of them uh, inviting a veteran guy on a PTO and that could cap and a Kevin B access, somebody of that nature. I mean, there are other, other guys out there, but I, I think that's a possibility, but I still think that this management team will recognize down the line that if this team is going to go far, this season, get past Tampa and Boston and get to the Eastern Conference Final, they're going to need to upgrade their defense. All hands on deck for now. New hands uh, may join the struggle at some point uh, in the future, but uh, uh, for the short term, you have your crew pretty much, and it's a solid crew. Not a perfect crew, but one that can certainly get the ball rolling.